Access the repair and maintenance cockpit via the side menu or landing page. All other features displayed here are in our introduction knowledge base article and video tutorial. For the purposes of this video, I will be the maintenance manager at this property. And as a cockpit owner, I do the following. This is the current month, correct, September. I review the figures from yesterday and that I do by hovering over the bar here and I get a breakdown of exactly what is in the system. And on the right hand side, I can click on the specific day and see the hours imported from the timekeeping system. And if I'm happy with this, I can save. Dates that are written in the color purple means a national holiday. This is country specific and does not include Christmas Day and New Year's Day. The weather feature is activated. This is especially useful for properties with outdoor restaurants, bars, pubs, a swimming pool and even properties which is near the airport. It displays the weather up to 10 days in advance. Two view options in the cockpit, productivity and hours. Here's a breakdown of the daily hours from the actual schedule that is imported into PMI. Various indicators on this chart, total revenue, smart forecast, productive hours and so on. Click a legend to activate on the graph. What I can mention is that we work mostly Monday to Friday. On Saturdays, I have one technical assistant on duty from 1100 hours to 1500 hours. On Sundays, there is no one on duty. However, if there is something that can't wait until Monday, then the reception calls me and we decide what to do, ensuring guest satisfaction and safety is always priority number one. I can also mention that our receptionists are fantastic. They've been on cross training in our department, so they even know how to operate the ventilation system, for example. Everything to the left of the black dotted vertical line are the historical hours and what the smart forecast was. To the right, the hours in the current schedule. I can check if yesterday's figures are correct. If there's good alignment, all is in order then. However, let's deep dive into these figures. So I used seven hours in total, even though the smart forecast was just over 15 hours. And this is because both myself and the technical assistant on duty worked half shift each because today we needed the extra hours due to the cleanup after the leakage in the ceiling in the lobby. So that is why we used less hours yesterday to be able to utilize the extra hours today when it's needed. So what can I learn from the past 27 days? Are there days where we were overstaffed or understaffed? We'll be able to complete all our tasks each day. Were we able to fix all the work orders in a timely manner? Did any of this impact the guest experience? Did we get any feedback from the reception team or the front office manager? Any feedback from the technical team when they've spoken to a guest in the corridor perhaps? Over and understaffing can be a tricky one because when we are understaffed, then the team does not necessarily have enough time to ensure all daily tasks are completed. We don't necessarily have enough time to ensure that everything on the preventative maintenance checklist is complete or all the work orders received for the day are done in a timely manner as per our service standards. And if we are overstaffed, we run the risk that our team is standing around and not necessarily being very productive. It's too late to adjust any of these now as it's in the past. However, is there anything we can do to improve the results for this month? For October, we'll be trying out a more flexible schedule because for now, all three technical assistants started at the same time. So everyone was here at seven in the morning and finished at three in the afternoon. This meant that there was no one at the property after 3 p.m. So as of the 1st of October, one assistant will start at seven in the morning until three in the afternoon. Another one starts at eight in the morning until four in the afternoon. And then the third one will start at 10 in the morning until six in the evening. This way, we ensure that there's a technical assistant on duty until housekeeping is done for the day. And this way, the hours will be in line with the activity at the property. So moving on to the future year, the last few days of the month, this is something I can do something about today. The blue bars represent what is in the actual schedule. So how aligned are the hours with the smart hours forecast? Are there differences? Are there days that I'm understaffed or overstaffed? 
Can I move the hours around a bit so that I have the correct staffing levels when needed? So as I mentioned earlier, I moved hours from the 27th to the 28th as I needed more hours today. And on Thursday, I can also do a couple of changes here as I don't need the extra three and a half hours. So a few minor tweaks here and there should be enough to get a better result at the end of the month. Best practice recommends looking seven to 10 days ahead. So I will definitely be re-looking at the schedule for the first week of October to ensure all is in order and that I'm using the hours when it's needed. Moving down further on the left here, you can follow the accumulated hours month to date or include the hours scheduled by month end. Choosing your local currency allows you to follow the accumulated labor cost per hour, which is calculated based on your reported total labor cost. Two more view options here. Total productivity. This includes productive and non-productive hours. Your non-productive hours are hours that are paid for by the property, but it was not part of your regular workday. So it could include PMI training, short and long-term sick leave, mandatory fire drill and evacuation training, and so on. The other, operational productivity, is the productive worked hours. On the right-hand side of the screen, you have the data table with all the relevant information for the month you are focusing on. Here you have the month and forecasted hours, and this is how many hours I can use for the month of September. So how to calculate the productivity target? Use the cost driver and divide it by the hours forecasted for the month. And you have your productivity target. This is the revenue produced per labor hour. And to calculate the smart forecast, which is the yellow line on the graph, this would be your daily cost driver divided by revenue produced per labor hour. If we look at the figures, we see that our live forecast is 275 hours. We have used already 258 hours so far, month to date. And if we continue in this manner, this is what we will end up using at the end of the month. So with a couple of changes I intend doing for the next few days, I should be able to align the hours better with the activity level at the property. All these figures are updated daily from your property management system. EMS to ensure you can make good decisions at any time. You can manually input hours here. If, for example, the hours have not been scheduled in your timekeeping system or you've forgotten because someone is sick and you needed another person to work. However, changes you make manually here will not be reflected in your TKS. Also, all the hours from the schedule module will appear here. Use the note function as often as needed. This is a great way to keep track of unforeseen hours used on a specific day. It could be anything from staff on training or even sick leave. In this specific example, we used almost 19 hours instead of seven. We had a guest that was making food in the room and they lost control. We have a no open flame policy, so this was very serious. Thank goodness the alarm was activated and all the relevant teams arrived to ensure all was in the highest order. I called in two extra technicians so that we could do a thorough safety check of the floors and hotel rooms affected because we did not want to place any rooms on out of order if it was not necessary. As soon as the comment is saved, it automatically appears on the management perspective for the general manager to see. It's always useful to understand how we ended up with the result. A little bit more on the data table here. The red horizontal line, everything above is the historic days, your past days, and then everything below is all future days. The highlighted one over here is today's date, so that's always in a darker font. Here above, you see the timekeeping system here is called time plan, and here you can see that these hours have been approved in the system. And then looking for today and then tomorrow for the next two days, then you see that it's in the color red. And this is because it is future hours that has not yet been updated in the system. And another example, just to show you very quickly, this is a cockpit that has not been saved from yesterday. And as you can see here, the time plan hours, the timekeeping system is in red. So hasn't been saved yet in the system. You are also able to click on any past day on your TKS system and here you get an overview 
of all the hours used and exactly what it was. Further down on the data table is your month to date figures. Here you see how you are doing so far this month compared to the forecast and month end to see what you will end up with if you want to continue in this manner. This gives you a quick glimpse into any major changes that may be needed for the rest of the month. Here you also have the current average rate per hour, including social costs. Be sure to check that this is correct as it affects the labor costs. Depending on user rights, this may be only visible for you as the cockpit owner. And here, the scheduled hours. This shows the hours added in your PMI schedule. Unspecified means that it's imported from the timekeeping system or only scheduled as lump sums, and that means without a name. And one last comment on the graphs. Here's an example of shifts that are missing for the day. Let's do a quick recap of the daily routines in the cockpit. Labor cockpits should be saved at least five times a week by the cockpit owner. Update your timekeeping system before working in the cockpit. Look at the current month. Check the hours for yesterday and do adjustments if needed by clicking on the plus sign. If you don't yet have a TKS system installed, you will need to add the actual hours manually. Click on the plus sign for that specific day and enter the hours. Then you need to confirm to update the cockpit. Check yesterday's hours and add your comments. Check the status of your actual productivity and hours month to date and status for the rest of the month. Confirm that if you are behind your month end target, you will look into the live forecast and schedule and try to align the staffing according to the activity level meaning the hours used should match the revenue. Moving on to month-end routines, this can be done on the first working day of the new calendar month. Look at the month that passed. Are all the hours complete? Did we reach the productivity target that was set for the month? Summarize the month by adding a general comment. You can write the comment on the last day of the month here can be what went well and what the learnings were. Update the current rate here with the actual outcome after the PL is ready at month end closing. This task could be on the financial controller's checklist, so be sure to check what your property's routines are. And as always, don't forget to save. More information on the labor cockpit can be found in our knowledge base article and video tutorial series. Thank you and take care.